first thing. Them, 
but I saw a thought starting off. We need to we need to get a little bit excited about the gifts of the Spirit because I think there's a lot of different things uh, people have said, maybe different backgrounds that we have that would say, well, maybe uh, I don't know about the gifts of the Spirit. I don't know if it's for me. I don't know. But so I said, let's just turn the word. We're going to turn the word today because I think that that it speaks to us, but but it also get us excited that hey, there's there's this awesome thing, this awesome these awesome gifts that the Lord has for us, that God has for us, and if we eagerly desire them, if we eagerly seek after them, He's going to give them to us, and we're going to see them in operation in our everyday lives. So we're going to start, though, with John chapter 14 and verse 12. And um, about two weeks ago, Pastor was talking, and he shared about the, the Holy Spirit, that He was one that kind of <coughs> He reveals truth. And John chapter 14, 15, and 16, those are really uh, neat passages when you're talking about the Holy Spirit and wanting to know about the Holy Spirit, Jesus kind of lays out some groundwork for the Holy Spirit. But one of the things he says in the midst of this, in John 14, verse 12, he says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will be and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And in this Jesus was mentioning, I'm going to the Father, so we in the whole passage, like I mentioned, 14, 15, and 16. When Jesus went to the Father, His Spirit came. So now we have the Spirit residing inside of us. And He says, this though, He says, I, will, uh, I tell you, whoever believes in Me will do the works I have been doing. That's pretty exciting. Just the, just the, that was a statement alone. Alright? Jesus is out healing people, casting out demons, raising people from the dead. He's, he speaks with such discernment. People would come and question Him, and He would... Uh, he would question right the heart of heart of what they were saying to him. He's he's going. He's, he's operating all these powerful things. Miracles talk about. You know, fish has coin in his mouth, gold coins, so he can pay some taxes, and, and multiplying bread and multiplying uh, food for for thousands of people. And he says, "Those who believe in me will do the works I've been doing." Well, that, that alone doesn't get me you know kind of excited. I'm like cool super me with super. Superhero, right? I'm like, yes, already. Superpowers are really cool and exciting. But then, and then it says, and then it goes on and says, and they will do even greater works. And sometimes I think about that. Oh, greater works. Well, uh, what what's greater than the things that you, I mean? Like what? And then, then I was and I was thinking about, like, well, sure, what are you saying? Greater works. He said, Andrew, think about it. And every believer, right? We got a family and this morning gathering about a, a 10, 12 of us, and. and, and if every believer was out working the miracles that, that Jesus was doing, was doing the same thing, do you think about the, 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 the mere quantity of miraculous things that would be happening? And so why was, and I, and I was, why, why was Jesus doing so much miraculous things? He was doing it by the same spirit that was living inside of us. That's right. Mm -hmm. So like, whoa, he was doing these same things, and then he gives us this spirit, which he did things by. He was led by the Spirit. And in, in the book of Luke, he talks over and over again. He was led by the Spirit. To, he was led by the Spirit to go there. And that same Spirit now lives inside of us. Amen. That's right. And so what was Jesus' purpose in, in um, John 17? You know, it's really interesting for, for me because sometimes when I think about Jesus, I, I focus a lot we believe, right, that Jesus was fully God and fully man. But sometimes when we think about these greater things he did and we think about his life, we attribute it more to his God side than his yes. human side. Because so we're like, oh, well, uh, he did those things because he's God. Yeah. But then we figure out the same spirit that's living inside of him and moving him and leading him and guiding him to, to say these things, to do these things. It was the same spirit that lived inside of us. And Jesus did all yes. these things yes. in John chapter 17. Verse 4, he said he did it so that he would bring glory to the Father. So I'm, he's living, he's doing his miracles. It wasn't it wasn't because he was getting more fans, because if anything, Jesus was one that he, he sent people away. He was like, drink my flesh, eat my blood. And they all like scattered, right? And rich man, the rich young man came and hey, I followed everything. He said, go sell everything and then follow me. He's like, I don't know, that's a little tough. So Jesus definitely wasn't doing these things so that he would get to make a church, right? He was doing them specifically because it was showing, um, 17 says, showing the glory of the Father. Right. It was showing the goodness of the Father. It was showing the character of the Father. So everything he did, the words that he spoke, the discernment that he had, the miracles and the healing, 
all these things. It was all based on, I only do what I see the Father doing. I'm only going to do it because I want to, I want to allow the Father to keep more glory. I want to make Him bigger than me. And if we learn anything from our, our study in Galatians, that's, that's, the, that's the, like the basis of, of our Christianity, right? We're going to do stuff, that we're going to put ourselves over that somebody else can be lifted up. And so now we have, again, God doing these extraordinary acts. Jesus going out doing these extraordinary acts, and he says, you guys can do the same thing. And it's going to be greater because every one of you, he started with the 12 disciples, from his 12 disciples, spread the whole church. Why? Because the Holy Spirit came, and they were able to do the exact same things that he did. So now when the, yeah, the early church began, there was an explosion of the Holy Spirit. That's why I, I put it. Because they were, they were ordinary people empowered by the Spirit. There's the times in, in the book of Acts, right? They, 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 I mean, they were just ordinary school people. They were amazed because, but they, but they began to notice something. These are ordinary, unschooled people, but they noticed that they had been fed with God. There was something on them. That wasn't their own. It, they couldn't attribute it to their, their great ability to speak or their knowledge of Greek or anything of that, right? They, their, their ability was they had been with God. They had God. Like the Spirit of God was moving inside of them, and they did extraordinary acts. So today we're going to turn and we're going to begin this series in 1 Corinthians. Because Paul makes some really um, important, important encouragements to the, to the church in Corinthians that I think... Today, if we're thinking about, hey, what could, what could the body of Christ look like at Catholic City Church? It would look like one empowered by the Spirit, seeing the gifts of the Spirit in operation all the time. I mean, it starts with Paul when he starts encouraging the church. Hey, this is what the, this is what the gifts of the Spirit is all about. Here's, the, here's where they at. Here's what, how they're operating. So let's turn. We're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 this morning. <coughs> And we're going to start with verse 1 through 3. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I love this because I think that this is the same, this is the same heart in which Pastor and I, as we pray and ask God, you know, what, what is the message? What's the next series we're supposed to do? This, this is the same heart that, that Paul speaks here. He says, Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. And that's, and that's the whole reason why we want to. We don't want you guys to be, we want you guys to be informed. This is how the Spirit operates. These are good things. This can happen in everyday life. This is nothing special for an elite group. God, Jesus didn't do it because he was God. He did it because he was full of the Spirit, just as we are. So you know that, uh, verse 2, you know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who speaks by the Spirit of God says, Jesus is Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Right. So I remember in, in Acts chapter 8 about the Simon the Sorcerer. Hmm. Right? The Simon the Sorcerer is a man who by evil spirits led people astray. And he did miraculous things and he earned a crowd for himself. He actually took pride in it. And he saw something when he saw the early disciples, when he saw them operating in the gifts of the Spirit, all of a sudden he said, man, there's something, there's something really neat about that gift. I want some of that. And, and they, he even offered payment so that he would receive the gifts of the Spirit. But the gifts of the Spirit are not to, not to be used, or the gifts that you have, the talents that God's given you, the abilities and the, the gifts of the Spirit, are not used for us to lead you astray. They're not used even in the place that we're talking about, even in the place of pride. They're not, so we'll learn a little bit further. It's not something that, hey, Andrew does, does this, so let's promote him to Mr. Healer of the church. Well, no, that's not it. We're going to learn, we'll learn that, we'll continue to learn that. But he says specifically, the gifts of the Spirit is this. So that Jesus is Lord. So that it would say, this gives the Spirit to say, Jesus is Lord. It increases my desire. Man, I want to see the gifts of the Spirit in operation. I want to see miracles, healings, prophecies, tongues, and, and dreams and visions begin to happen in our church all the time. Him speaking through the body. Why? Because I know when those things are in operation, people are going to begin to say, man, Jesus is Lord. They're going to be in awe. The early church in Acts is all the time. They say, 
this miracle happened and the people were in awe of God. They began to praise him. Why? Because they saw that he was at work in, in ordinary life situations. Man, what would it look like, right? What would it begin to look like in Madison where there's skepticism and, and, and all this weird the philosophies about life, right? And we just right. begin to see the Spirit of God moving and grab us into They can't even explain it. You know, all of our university that we have here, we have really smart, amazing people in this town. It's, it's awesome. But you know what? They can't explain. Other than the, uh, once miracles and wonders and, and spiritual gifts start in operation, they won't be able to explain it other than to say, it must be God. Right. Jesus is Lord. And so Paul's saying here, I don't want you to be ignorant because I know when these gifts are in operation, people begin to see God. They can't explain it. You go over to your neighbor's house and, and some, the, the Spirit of God speaks to you for them, a specific word of knowledge, and you go and over to their house and knock on the door and share with them. Or, or you're a parent and you're like, man, I really need some discernment. You know, that was the hardest, maybe, maybe one of the more difficult things growing up in a home with parents that understood the gifts of the Spirit and had the gifts of discernment. You know, you couldn't get away with anything. <laughs> and know your motivation. Why do they know your motivation? I mean, I think, one, they're, they're awesome parents, but I think they have the Spirit of God. They know these things. Right? What would it be like in a church, right, when, when we're, we're knowing each other, knowing each other, because the Spirit gets to reveal it, and reveal it to us, and then we're able to encourage one another, build one another up. Why? Because Jesus is Lord. That's right. I mean, this is the picture Paul's beginning to paint here, just in this, this first three verses here. I don't want you guys to be ignorant because the gifts of the Spirit, they magnify the worship of Jesus. They raise Him up. They exalt Him. And I want a church. I want to be a church like that, right? I want to be a believer like that, that people see my life and they say, man, there's something different about you. It's, a, it's the Spirit of God on your life. But we need the operation of the gifts of the Spirit in our body, in our lives, because it begins to point to other people. That Jesus is Lord. Amen. That's right. He's bigger than the idols. They weren't answering the prayers. They were doing more and more prayers for the different idols and trying to get these answers. And it wasn't working until we prayed to God. And he starts to answer. That's the type of church that we can be. We can be a, a body of believers that see the gifts of operation. And others around us will see our lives and say, man, there's something different. It's the Lord that's on us. It's the Spirit of God in your lives. Given for the for the common good. 
each one of the manifestations, each one basically is the show, is the act of the Spirit, is the demonstration of the Spirit. So each one of the manifestations of the Spirit is given for the common good. The common good of who? Again, Paul, at the beginning of his argument, that Paul, the common good is for the body. It's for the body. It's common for all, it's good for all of us that we be encouraged, would be uplifted, that the, that if, for the common good of the sake of Christ, that his name would be continued to be lifted up. Verse 8, to one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. Insight for a specific situation. Man, I love, I love this gift of the Spirit because sometimes I get stumped in situations. You know, I'm doing stuff for the church and trying to figure out this, or I'm at home and trying to figure out a situation, and I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but the situation down in Springfield, I'm like, this is crazy, I need some wisdom. The Spirit of God gives me wisdom, and He gives me wisdom, truth, and how, and how to apply it in this situation. To another, a message of knowledge by the means of the same Spirit. I like how he's just repeating this. To another, faith is by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still, to another, interpretation of his own. All these, verse 11, all these are the work of one and the same Spirit. He distributes them to each one just as he determines. So we have this list of amazing gifts. We've got the, the wisdom, the knowledge, miraculous things. I would love I mean, just to see miraculous uh, powers happening, multiplication of bread, prophecy. I have insight for somebody, a message from God for somebody. So whether it's foretelling or encouraging for them in the situation, I, I, I have profit, prophetic gifting. And this is this is important. As we come together in the in, in, come together as a body, each one of us have this ability because the same spirit is going to give give Tina something for us in the morning. Now word from God. Hey, we're coming through the door and you're greeting one another, and you have something for somebody. You you find out, hey, somebody is is, is sick this week, and man. I pray, God, and we're going to find out that we eagerly desire to be used by this. Mm -hmm. So it's not, not only there's wisdom, right? The, the word also encourages us that we call the elders of the church and say, hey, if there's a sick, let them pray for those who are among us, right? But there's also, man, I desire to be used by the Spirit of God for healing this moment. God, would you, through, through my prayer, heal this, heal this person through my prayer. The Spirit, it's the same Spirit, and He distributes those gifts as He wills. Again, put this in my notes again. I'll just repeat it over and over again. Because it's important, so important. I think maybe I've seen the abuse of it. I said nobody is special or better. That's right. We just have to make ourselves available to the Spirit. The Spirit of God is in us as believers. We make ourselves available to Him, and He's going to. Hey, okay, let me know it. There's something I need you to do. There's a prayer. I need, there's something I need to do. And we make ourselves available. The Spirit of God distributes them to us so that the body is lifted up. And so that Jesus again. Amen. Yeah. Verse 15 through 26. This is a longer passage here. I'm, I'm, I'm skipping the verse. Let's, let's continue 12. 12 through 14. Um, right after 11 it says, By the same Spirit He distributes them to each one as just as He determines. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jew or Gentile, slave or free, and we are all given the one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made of one part, but of many. So again, this emphasis on, again, we saw... Paul emphasizes this, the Spirit of God emphasizes this to the church of Galatians, right? There's, there's, there's freedom, there's, there's one, you guys are one, there's no Jew or Gentile, there's nobody has one up on each other. The same thing again when he's talking about the gifts of the Spirit. He's emphasizing this one body. You guys are unified, and each one has a part to play. That's why it's not, again, the emphasis is not on pastor or I to speak and we'd be the only one speaking. No, the Spirit of God says, no, I place you, angel, here, and I want you to you specifically to be used by the gifts of the Spirit. And so if, if you're in operation of the Spirit, it's going to bring the body into one. 
We need you here this morning. We need you at our MCs. We need each other when we gather together. Because the Spirit of God is going to know where we've been through, and He's going to give a specific gift to each of us to help us continue to see that Jesus is Lord and us to be united as a body. So this, this next passage here, Paul begins to explain this. And I love this passage. People use this for all sorts of different um, messages, and I think it's really important for us to understand maybe the uh, appreciation of each other's gifts. But this is specifically talking about the gifts of the Spirit. We are one body. Don't be jealous. Let's read this. Verse 15. Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Don't be jealous. God has placed you in the part. He's gifted you who you are. He's given you the, the ability of the spirit. Part that we would all have together. He wanted you to be a part of this. He made you who you are. And the experience you have with the Lord enables you sometimes to be used in certain gifts. To say, why is this one person so full of faith in this situation? Well, sometimes you don't understand the situation they had to go through in order for the gift of the Spirit to be operated and give the faith the operation in their life. That's, and then it begins to, then you can begin to also appreciate this the Lord and His work in their life even more. All this, it makes Jesus look really, really awesome, right? Amen. And why is that person able to, uh, uh, to have such faith? Man, you don't know what they went through in order to receive the gift of faith that they have. But the Spirit of God has given them another gift to the body that they would encourage you also in your moment of, of despair or your moment of tragedy, that you would also have the same faith because it's the same Spirit. It wants to give faith to the body yes, so that Jesus it. is Lord. So whenever something happens, I, I remind them, our Lord, you, man, that faith rises up within me. It's a gift of the Spirit. Just as He wanted it to be. In verse 19, if they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. I mean, and for me, I just get excited to get Paul saying, man, I don't want you to be with the form because I know when these things are in operation, your body will come together and it's going to be Powerful, it's going to show who God is. 21. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, and the hand and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and the parts that we think are less honorable we treat with special honor, and the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lack, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one foot part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Keep on mentioning this, but we can't say we don't need this or we don't need that. These gifts of the Spirit here, sometimes in certain church settings, maybe people say, hey, I don't need this, or maybe we're only going to allow this to happen in, in, our, in, our, in our group. No, again, Paul is emphasizing, no, we need all the gifts of the Spirit to be represented. And sometimes in certain situations, maybe this one will be a little bit more private than the other one. There's some appropriation, and I think as we continue in the, in the series, we're going, to, we're going to talk about that, the appropriateness thing. But Paul is emphasizing here, no, we're going to rejoice with this. When it happens, we're going to rejoice that God is moving in our midst, that we're seeing the Spirit of God operate in operation because the joy is seen, because again, it exalts Jesus. Let's celebrate this. Amen. Man, if someone is suffering, if someone's suffering, man, let's move towards that so that the Spirit of God, so the Spirit of God will be evident in them. 
And we, we know something is, is happening and, and people's lives are getting uh, radically changed like we did even a couple weeks ago with the, with the baby dedication and the testimony. And everything. Man, we rejoice together because it's evidence of the Spirit of God at work in our body and it points that Jesus is Lord over us. So verse 27. Thirty-one. I love Paul. Paul doesn't stop. He just keeps on pouring it on right here. Yeah. Verse twenty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. I love this. I, I love this aspect of the body because it 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 raises up the low and it and it lowers down. Yes. Right. So if I'm, uh, sometimes, sometimes, you know, in, in my bad days, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm just down here, I got this situation. But no, in this, with the Spirit, no. I, I've been raised up. Because each one of us has our part. Each one of us has an equal importance in the body of Christ. That's right. Whether, whether we're a public gift, we're the one speaking in the morning, or hey, no, I'm the, I'm the private intercessor in the back as they get the faith that I'm praying in, praying in the kingdom, praying in uh, the lost souls. Mm -hmm. That's right. Both parts play an important part. No, uh, I have the, the gift of service. Britain isn't in here, but Britain has the gift of service. Like oh, the yeah. Spirit of God moves on him and he's serving all the time. We just had a missional community and you know got all these dishes left that night and he, he just noticed. He was like, wow, I want to serve you guys. Like, he did all the dishes for us. You know, like the, each one is important, but he doesn't come up here. We may have a I don't know, maybe it's good, but a message, or like a, like, what would it look like for him to serve in public? I don't know, you know, but each gift is important. For one body, it brings a low high, those that are unseen, it brings them up. Those who are seen, you know, he's got to come down, because it's not about you, it's about Jesus. That's about Jesus. Yeah, 28. And God has placed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, and miracles, then gifts of healing, helping of guidance and of different kinds of tongues are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret all rhetorical questions. You might, you might say no, but this is key. And some teachings that I've heard, they focus on that and they say no. So then, okay, then just this person does it, just this person does it. But verse 31, then Paul, or the Holy Spirit, he ruins all of that. Because he says, now we really desire the greater gifts. Amen. It's not that do all persons have these gifts, or do all the people profit, and so, okay, not all people do it, so I shouldn't have it, or I shouldn't seek after it. No, it says, it says eagerly desire it, because all can have it. Yes. It's an emphasis more on that we can have it, not that we can't have it. The core was, does, do all people do that? Well, not all people do it. No, no, no. But equally desire it because you could be the one that the Spirit uses. That's right. It's a position of our faith, of our desire in our heart to say, no, I, I want to be used. That's why I said each one of us need to be put, in the, to put ourselves in the position that we say, Holy Spirit, yes, use me. And these gifts make myself available. As we make ourselves available, the Holy Spirit will pour these things out to us that would be used in operation. That's the emphasis here. Not on if it's not happening. Don't do it. No. It's emphasis on that you can do it. Yeah. Make yourself available. Desire these things. Not all people do. It may not be the most theological sound. You may be the lucky one that day. <laughs> right? <laughs> you may be the one that God, that the Holy Spirit distributes that gift to that moment that they would encourage the body. Eagerly desire the greater gifts. I heard our favorite. I want to continue here. Because Andrew, you're covering so much scripture. I said that at the beginning. We got we got some more here. How are these to be used? Again, it's a selflessness. So we know in in First Corinthians 13 is the love chapter. We always focus on love chapter. And it's read during um, traditionally. Wedding times and things of that nature. But there's so much more. This is about the gifts of the Spirit. Yes. That's right. That's what it's about. And why is this important? Because 
Paul must have had, uh, preaching to the Corinthian church, must have had the same situation we still find ourselves in today. That we take these gifts and we get prideful about them. And so he has to remind, uh, remind them again, and, that, and the Holy Spirit is reminding us that it's not about who has the gifts and, and how well you use them or how the Holy Spirit uses you in them. It's about love. It's about the selfish love to, to share this gift so that Jesus is Lord, so that Jesus gets at his play. If I, let's read verse uh, 1 of chapter 13. If I speak in tongues of men and angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all the mysteries and all the knowledge, and if I have a, have a faith that can move mountains, but I don't have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth, it always approaches protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Read in there verse 8, love never fails. So in, the, in these operations, the gifts of love, that we talked about in our last thing, what are the two laws? Two laws, to love God and to love others. So if I'm loving God, when I use the gift of the Spirit, hey, it's all about Him, it's not about me. And if I'm loving others, it's all about others, and it's not about me. When I'm, in, when I'm e eagerly desiring these gifts, it's not because the Bible this is going to increase. It's because I know that it's going to benefit those who are around me. It's going to benefit my family. Like, I give the example of in my home. The gift of discernment. They would, all of a sudden, they would know what's going on. They would know my heart. I'm like, how do you guys know this all the time? The Spirit of God. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to increase our family. Man, we're, we're in need of, of, we need of something to end the month. Things are short. I don't know what to do. Man, I... I I need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, give me faith to believe. You know, Holy Spirit, I need a miracle right now in my family. It's going to, the gifts of the Spirit is, we focus a lot on the church body, but it's going to, it's going to benefit yes. my immediate family if we begin to start operating yes. with the gifts of the Spirit. I talk about medical bills and, and things like that. I'm like, no, I, God, I need the healing. We need the healing in our family right now. You know, it, it's, going to, it's going to benefit our workplace. You're a, you're a leader. You're, you're in, in charge of situations. Man, you need wisdom for this. I don't know how this all going to work together. God, give me wisdom. And he comes through. You're in, you're in school or taking classes. I need wisdom for this. Man, I need the gifts of the Spirit. I, need the, I desire it. Holy Spirit, come be more evident in my life. Come be evident in my life. I need, your, I need you. Man, and without a doubt, without a doubt, it's going to change our city. It's going to change our neighbors. When we get this operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Because they're going to be able to see the Lord. So it's love. It's love. It's all about God. It's all about Him getting the glory. It's all about others getting the glory. That's what the gifts of the Spirit are in operation for. Verse, verse 8. I'm going to read some more here. Because this is another area of uh, our teaching, depending on where, what you've heard and things like that. And Paul, I love Paul because he, he speaks the argument and he's, he's, he's really clear. And I know what the Holy Spirit's felt is even clearer. So this is really good. Verse 8, love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and and we prophesy in part. But, we, with, but when completeness comes. What is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I become a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only in reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. That is an important part. And I want to speak truth over false things that I've spoken. In verse 10, it says, But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. 
And I know uh, the Word of God is full revelation of who God is. I can agree with that. But the Holy Spirit, Jesus makes this one statement, and I love it, right as he introduced the Holy Spirit in uh, John chapter 16. He says, there's so much more I want to tell you, but when the Spirit come, he'll reveal these things. And so I know the Word of God contains the revelation of God, but it's living and active and breathing in it. And when the Spirit of God gets a hold of the words of truth, then it changes. And, it, and every time I could read a scripture ten times, and sometimes there's like multiple things that just apply to apply the situation. It's growing. It's living. It's, a, it's applicable. But here, this verse. It's so, so in this verse, it's not talking about just the Word of God. It's sometimes that the false teaching that that when the when the Word of God is complete. It goes on to say that when we see him face to face, what we know in part will be fully known. So when we see, when are we going to see face to face? It's the full revelation of who God is. When we see him, when we go to heaven, whether it be him calling us or we pass and, and stand before him, we will fully know who he is. I like to tell people sometimes, I think when we get to heaven, God's going to smile a little bit and say, hey, come here. i got some things to explain to you. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and, and it's just, when I'm reading this, I'm like, yeah. there's a lot of things I know, and the Spirit is revealing, but I can't wait till that moment when I see face to face finally what I've been beholding my whole life, right? I've been beholding, and I know just in part, I know that the Spirit has been revealing things, and I, I can say, man, I'm going to get really close. I think the focus is coming in even more and more close. But I know in that moment, when I get to see Him face to face, I will fully know who He is. Now, there's going to be no more prophecy need for prophecy. There's going to be no more need for words of wisdom. There's going to be no more need for healing because our bodies are going to be made new. There's going to be no more need for faith because, man, we have it. It's theirs. So, so if you have ever heard that taught ta otherwise, I believe that it's incorrect. That the word of God is it's not full until we see Him face to face. Until we pres we are present with Him, we're absent with the body. We're going to be present with Him, and we're going to fully know all these mysteries, fully know His character, fully experience His character. But right now, we know it in part, and the Holy Spirit is going to continue to reveal it to us. And that's why we deeply desire and that it, man, I want to know it. I want to know, I want to receive it more, I want more of it. So let's, uh, I want to end here, verse 13 and uh, 14, 1. So it says, 13, and know these three remain, faith, hope, and love. The greatest is love. Why? Because love, it, 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 love allows us to lift each other up. Love says, and your best is my extent. This applies for every situation in our life. It applies also for it. It, it applies in we're talking about the gifts of the spirit because man, love says, man, Lord Jesus, you get all the credit. I'm willing to be used with Jesus, you get all the credit. Verse 14, one again. And we're going to continue these series uh, for the for the next month on the gift of the gift of the spirit. But in verse 14, one it says again, follow the way of love and eagerly desire. Be excited about it. Be excited that, man, the Spirit of God can be, I, I can be operation in my life, and the Spirit of God is, it desires to, to move in this situation, and this, and this is exciting. This is something I want. This is something I want to seek out. This is something I want to, I want to grab hold of. This series is important because I think it's going to, it's going to catapult our body because it's a, I, we don't want you to be misinformed. There's something more you guys can have. There's something more.
your whole, your whole world. The Spirit of God can reveal these things to you. So pray. I, I want to I wanna receive the gift of the Spirit. God, God even in, in, when I'm home alone, God, would I, would I receive these gifts of the Spirit? May they be evident in my life. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14, it said that Timothy had received these things by the laying on of hands. That somebody prayed for him. And as they were praying for him, as they, as they prayed for him, that he received his gifts of the Spirit. And it became evident in his life. So this morning, at the, at the end, after uh, I close here, about five minutes or so, less than five minutes, we're going to, if you want to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit and say, I want these to be evident in my life, I'm going to invite you forward. And we're going to pray. I want to pray with you. I want to pray and lay my hands on you and believe that the Spirit of God is going to be in operation and it's going to manifest in your life. Yes. This goes. This, this third thing it goes. It goes through all of us, right? Is desire. I wake up in the morning, Holy Spirit. This desire today, have you used me? Holy Spirit, would you lead me? Holy Spirit, would, would your gifts be in operation in me? Because I know when you're in operation in me, the Lord Jesus, He gets He gets glorified, and I, I want I want to participate in that today. Yeah. Help me, help me, Lord, when I'm when I'm in my workplace, when I'm working with my family, right? God, Holy Spirit, just show me what you want me to do. I, I, I'm willing. I'm willing to be used. When we make ourselves available to Him, is I can't, you know, I can't explain it through a, through a chart about it. But when we make ourselves available, when we say this, I desire to be used, that you be glorified. It's not about me, God. It's about you. And He takes that desire and He uses it. Start with the same.